and welcome to June. I'm Sandy Sanderson, joined with Christian Smith right here. Uh, welcome to our latest episode of Sweet 301, coming to you live from Pittsburgh, PA. We're here to give you the latest news and updates about Cole Club Sports. And you can remember, you can always watch all our broadcasts on our Sweet 301 page, as well as our Facebook and YouTube channels. Yeah, and remember to like uh, our Facebook pages, follow our Twitter accounts for all the latest news and media. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel for videos from around our leagues and to watch previous episodes, Sweet 301. All right. Well, it's you know it's the first show of technically the off season, so we got a lot to recap. Yes. Let's dive we do. right into let's let's start off with some basketball. How about that? Get that out of the way. Because right, this guy's sitting next to me. Let's inv- invite Matt Hazy to the set. There he is. How's everyone doing? Good. Good, good Matt. Good. How are you? Good. Good. Take us through uh, basketball is done, national champions are crowned, Uh, we're in the offseason, biggest things that are coming out now are the all-region teams. Yeah, all-region teams, so um, I believe last show we did have a a couple of them out, so uh, the rest of them will be uh, on this show here, and I believe we are starting with the New England uh, all-region teams as well here, as you can see there is really only one full team, um, with the second team just, just having two. Uh, we unfortunately did not get nom- enough nominations uh, to field a complete second or third team. But um, with the first team, we have um, Northeastern at center, uh, Sean Gurry. I don't want to chop that name up too bad. Uh, it's all on the screen there. We don't yeah, need to, we don't need to so read through it. Our, our readers can see it. And where can they find all these? All uh, on, on our website, uh, in our headlines pages. Um, but they're, they're all released there and okay. all over our social media as well. So New, New England's new ones come out. Yep. Uh, as you can see here, the Pacific as well, we were able to get uh, enough nominations to field three teams, which is which is awesome. Um, so as you guys can see there, uh, first, second, and third team Pacific, all regions. And then the South Atlantic, we were able to get enough for uh, two teams. And then after that comes the All-American teams. Uh, so those were released shortly after the South Atlantic. And as you can see there, uh, we have our three uh, All-American teams as well. So congrats to everybody who made an All-Region team uh, and an All-American team for the 22-23 season. Good stuff. And now we got uh, we had some new teams on the men's side of things. Yeah, since last show, uh, we have added Clarkson University in the New England uh, region. And then West Virginia University has come on as well. Uh, most likely going to be in that North Atlantic, uh, probably South region. Welcome back, Mountaineers. They're in uh, our league not too long ago and back in the NCBBA. So I think maybe Clarkson as well. But uh, welcome those teams to the NCBBA. Um, as far as housekeeping items go, what types of things should the teams be looking for, checking their emails for over the off season? Absolutely. So your renewal LPAs, the deadline was June 1st. So please, if you haven't gotten those in yet, please submit that and the registration form to myself as soon as possible. Uh, we don't want to leave you out come realignment time here in a couple months. Uh, and then also the league meeting is set to be held next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, via Facebook Live. Those invitations have been sent out as well. Uh, so please, if you can, join us for that as well. Yeah, a lot of important information going on in that meeting. Um, so y- that will be live on Facebook right here. If you're tuning into the Sweet 301 episode, you're going to be able to tune into the Facebook uh, league meeting, which uh, is yeah, a week from day at week from today at 7 p.m. Um, a lot of great information for teams, especially new officers uh, coming on board uh, for this upcoming year. It'd be a a great uh, idea for you to join us because we will be going over uh, quite a bit of information in that meeting about the league, operating uh, within the league, rules, things like that. So uh, make sure to mark your calendars for that. Um, sticking with the basketball, we appreciate you joining us, Matt. Um, sticking with the basketball theme, let's move on to the uh, women's side of the NCBBA. Uh, let's join uh, Alec Verhoff via satellite from Kansas City, Missouri. There What's he up, is. Guys? How's it going? Good, Alec. How you doing, man? Good, man. Denver Nuggets NBA champs. I'm a very happy guy. I mean, yeah, awesome, man. Really happy uh, for the Nuggets. <laughs> Couldn't even tell you that they won, uh, but I'm happy for you. Um, who they beat? Our, that's why he's in our basketball department because he's just ingrained in the sport. 
Did they, they beat they the beat Miami Heat? Yeah, I knew I that. I even knew okay. that. They did. Okay. They did. Well, congrats, Nuggets. Um, Carmelo Anthony play or? I'm going to ignore that. Let's just let's just. Let's Allen just Iverson. On. George Carl, I think, is the head coach. <laughs> yeah, George Carl. Yeah. All right. Penn, anyway. Penn Hills grad. Oh, uh, yeah? I didn't know that. Anyway, on the women's side of thing, like Matt, on the men's side, things wrapped up. We crowned a national champion. We're in the off season. Um, right now we're, we're in the, uh, middle of signing new teams, getting new teams on board, renewing our, our current teams. But let's talk about the new teams that, uh, we've signed thus far. Yeah. So since our last show, we've signed four more teams. Um, uh, we're up to six total now for the, uh, 23, 24 season. Um, as you can see, we added Brown, Indiana state, um, UCSD and William and Mary. So very excited to have those four teams come on. Um, UCSD and William and Mary are both kind of in like new new locations. So we'll look to build the Southern California Conference um, out in our Pacific, and then William and Mary will be looking to build off of them in the Virginia area. So very excited to have all of them coming on board. Well, it's good to have some anchor points down in those areas to uh, to build off of. Um, so welcome those four teams to the NCBBA. Uh, talk to us about some housekeeping items on the women's side. Same type of stuff as the men's, um, you know, renewal LPA is very important. Get those in. Like Matt said, those were due June 1st. So if you haven't sent those in, please get those to me as soon as possible. Um, we don't want to leave you out for next season. We want to have everybody accounted for. <laughs> Outside of that, uh, we have the league meeting, which is a week from tomorrow. It is June 21st at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So, um, you know, if that invitation has been sent out it's via Facebook Live, so be sure to tune into that. A lot of good information getting out um, that way. So, yeah, that's. Um, I think that's all we've got as far as housekeeping goes. All right. Anything else, Sandy, Alec, that uh, need to address on the basketball side of things? Not that I can think of. No. All right, no. Alec. Appreciate your time, uh, and we will uh, chat with you next month. Thanks, guys. See you, bud. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back to dive into some baseball and softball updates as those are the most recent national champions, championships to have occurred. We'll be right back. The game is the official headwear sponsor for Cold Club Sports. They offer our team's quality headwear, such as hats, visors, boonies, and beanies, for a great low price. All items are customizable to meet our team's needs. Contact Felicia.Battaglia at ColdClubSports.com for all of your headwear needs. Rawlings is the proud uniform, equipment, and ball sponsor of the National Club Baseball and Softball Associations. Teams receive up to 45% off on all their orders. For more information, including catalogs and price quotes, contact our front office today. All right, we're back, and we're welcoming, welcoming to the set Jimmy Henderson, Director of Division II Baseball Operations. And, Jimmy, we're going to – let's uh, let's flip the script a little bit here. Let's dive right into D2 and the World Series bracket and, and how Division II went uh, – the World Series went down. Okay, let's do it. Um, as you guys can see, Ohio State topped Grand Canyon um, in the championship game 3-0. Um, we had a really good tournament, a lot of close games, um, great weather, and a lot of impressive pitching um, coming from several teams. So Ohio State, Grand Canyon, New Hampshire, and Temple, um, coincidentally being the Final Four, a lot of good pitching from those four teams. Yeah, I think there's a uh, – you know, those two, two being northern schools, there's something to be said for that. And I've, I've heard that, like, Major League Scouts and so forth are looking at pitchers from the, in north the Northeast because they have less wear and tear on their arm because they don't play all year round. You know, everyone talks about, oh, Florida kids, Texas kids, Southern California kids, they can play baseball all year round. Well, from a pitching perspective, 
maybe it's good to leave a few pitches in the tank and have an offseason where you're resting your arms. So maybe that's why you see such good pitching out of those Northeast teams. Yeah, that makes sense. And I've, I've heard that before as well, um, that the pitching in the Northeast is very good. New Hampshire and Temple both had um, two really good arms that started their tournament off. Nice, nice. Talk to us about the facility. I mean, I know it was a new uh, new facility for Division II. Uh, Division One was there, but talk to us a little bit about uh, Alton, Illinois, and, and uh, Lloyd Hopkins Field. Yeah, uh, facility was great. City was great. Um, we were welcomed in with open arms um, from everybody involved, from Dallas Marts, the GM with the Alton River Dragons, the restaurants we visited. Um, it was a really nice town um, that was excited to have us. We saw what a banner at the golf course that we played we saw banners at restaurants welcoming the ncba in um so i have nothing good things to say i thought the facility was great fully turf field um brand new turf brand new mound for our event um plenty of seating among other things so i'm excited to get back there for d2 next year team seem to enjoy the uh the the atmosphere as well yeah, seemed like it. Um, just got a lot of compliments about the sports tap that was right across the street from the hotel. Um, so I think everybody enjoyed their time. Good, good. And uh, Ohio State won their first NCBA national title, a team that's been around with us since the beginning of the organization. Uh, their Division Two team takes home the crown, defeating the reigning national champ, Grand Canyon, who I think a lot of people thought Walking just, away just, just hand them the trophy on day one. But uh, – the Buckeyes had something else to say about that. And we have the Buckeyes uh, on the show, right? We have a, a guest caller coming in. Do you know how to pronounce his last name, Jimmy? My guess was going to be Nick. Uh... Papa Giorgio. <laughs> well, let's ask <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> let's welcome to the show, Nick. Nick, why don't, give us your last name, Nick. Patapsic. What's up, guys? Uh, it's Patapsic. Believe it or not, no one got it right uh, over the <laughs> tournament, so that uh, was fun to hear it pronounced differently every time. So, well, Nick, c- congratulations to you and the Buckeyes for winning their first NCBA national championship. Again, I mentioned your 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 program has been with us since day one. Uh, you know, I can spit off the names of some old guys that played in that first World Series in Syracuse, New York, and they've been chasing that title for. 23 years now. What's it feel like for your squad to finally bring one home back to Columbus? Uh, it's surreal. Um, yeah, that's always been the program goal is uh, bring it home. And for us to finally be able to do that um, was great, not only for our guys, but uh, all the guys before us too. Now, Nick, uh, kind of walk us through the tournament. Game one, your, was there ever a scare? You guys are down 3 nothing to Wisconsin lacrosse early, um, but the team seemed calm, cool, and collected. Is that the uh, attitude that was instilled in the dugout when that um, lacrosse takes the lead early, or what was going through you guys' heads? Uh, yeah, definitely. It was, it was definitely a spot where we've been before. Um, I don't know if you guys were following, but through regionals, we were down – I, I think we were down two runs in the last inning before that rain delay. Um, and so getting that game under our belts and winning that, we felt pretty much like we could do anything. Right, yeah. I think it was 3-1 to one, um, with you in West Virginia before heading to that rain delay. And so often you see in sports something like that totally turns the momentum. Um, so you guys feel that that game was kind of able to propel you, that you get through that, you can get through anything. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, was there ever any question? Drew Lane all year, um, National Player of the Week, Conference Player of the Week several times, um, that he was going to take the ball in the championship game there. Um, He was on three days rest, I guess one short of what the norm is. But uh, how would those conversations go to see who was going to start the pitching that game? Yeah, as our our senior and our pitching staff, he wasn't going to let anyone else take that ball from him. Yeah, very impressive. Goes all seven, um, and rightfully so, earns tournament MVP honors. Um, so he was fun to watch, and you guys were as a whole as well. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now, Nick, when you got back to campus, what what, what kind of reception did you have? Did uh, Was there a little bit of a team celebration, or uh, did everyone just part ways and call it a summer? There was uh, definitely some celebration in order. Um, even that night, we hit, we hit up the Alton Applebee's. They uh, they kept us long. They were great. Good stuff. Good stuff. 
Well, con- yeah. well Nick, congratulations on uh, uh, the national title. Uh, congratulations to the Buckeyes finally getting to bring home that, that big piece of hardware. Where are you guys going to showcase your banner and your, and your trophy? Uh, that's going in the art pack, which is our uh, main student gym. Okay. So everyone should see it. All right. Put it in there right next to Ohio State's club football championships. They got a couple of trophies of their own right there. It'll look, it'll look nice right next to it, and you guys can start adding on and pass them up. I like it. All right, Nick, well, thank you so much for joining us on the show. We appreciate your time. Good luck to uh, uh, you and the Buckeyes this offseason, and we'll see you uh, next fall if you're able to start the trend to, to, to repeat and uh, pick up a second one. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Thanks, Nick. All right, Jimmy, why don't you take us through the D2 top 20 that finished out the season? Yeah, so it's no surprise, Ohio State collecting all 15 first-place votes, um, followed by Grand Canyon, New Hampshire, among other World Series teams. Um, yeah, so this is our final top 20. Um, we won't have another one until next season, up in January, where we'll release the preseason 23-24 first top 20 poll. All right, good stuff. So Ohio State pops from the two spot to the one spot. And there we go. And Chad Lowe is a happy man. Yes. (laughs) Shout out to Chad Lowe out in San Diego. We have no wire-to-wire first-place team this year in D2. All right. Well, let's jump back to D1 because I understand we have our caller lined up. Let's go through the D1 World Series bracket. Go through that recap. Yeah, so Penn State takes down Wisconsin-Whitewater. What a fun team to watch, Whitewater. Maybe – a Cinderella story or whatever you want to call it, but takes down the number one seed Utah State, um, who spent a ton of time at number one in the Division One poll, follows it up by taking down reigning national champ Florida State. Um, moving on, they drop one to Virginia Tech, who's also a recent uh, national championship winner, but they get through them in the necessary game to make it to that championship game. Um, and all week they were just fun to watch. Um, but nonetheless, could not take down Penn State, who was another very talented team. Um, plenty of arms, plenty of bats. So overall, it seemed like a good tournament. What uh, what was, you know, UW, it's normally, you know, Wisconsin's the big dog out in the Wisconsin area. Um, not being there, what was that team like, the Whitewater team? Were they did, were they good defensively offensively were they 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 were loose is what it was they had they felt like they were playing with house money like they even said like like when we had our pre-tournament coaches meeting they're like we were excited to make regionals like the fact that we won regionals and we took down michigan we took down notre dame like that was unbelievable now we're going to the world series they're like we just hope we can show up and and look good they didn't even think they'd win a game they flat out said that out loud we don't we didn't we just want to represent and, and look competitive. Then they go out and they beat the number one team in the country, and they're like, holy cow. And they they still, to the point, like four days in the tournament, they said that was the biggest memory was the fact that they got there and they won their first game. You know, It wasn't yep. that they won the second game or a third game or a fourth game. It was just we won a game, and that's what we'll take home and remember. Great group of guys, a lot of fun, a lot of character on them. You know, their in-game interviews were hilarious. A bunch of guys – and they always refer to themselves as a family. You know, we're just a bunch of brothers having a good time playing baseball. Well, and good. They were, they, they were a lot of fun to watch. Because I was, I was emailing their club sport director, Matt Schneider, um, about some softball paperwork. And I said, you know, you know, seems like the baseball team's doing really well in Al- Alton, Illinois. And, he, Illinois. and uh, he said, yeah, I don't have any fingernails left. Like, we're on our edge of our seats here. So, um I was rooting for him. It was, yeah, it was a, I guess you call it a Cinderella story. I, I, you know, seemed like they obviously performed really, really well. So I was excited to hear what, uh, what kind of, what they looked like as a team on the field. So good for the uh, white, uh, UW Whitewater team. Yeah, I think things that stood out to me, they had a center fielder that ran down everything. What was it? Marley, I think his name was. Uh, he, he, and nothing fell in center field. And, and their catcher had a cannon. And, uh, in fact, he won player of the game for one game because I think he threw out two base runners and picked the kid off first. You know, I forget who they were playing in that game, but it's like nobody could get a rally started because he was just gunning people off the bases. Nice. And they had a closer there. Their uh, left-handed first baseman would come in and close, and he was 
He was throwing upper 80s from the left side, tall, long. He was tough. Cool. Was tough. A good, lot of good. fun to watch. And, yeah, and they were having a blast. So, good stuff. That's what it's about. Yeah. And they were our local team. They were, I think they were only like four hours away, four and a half hours away. And that was our closest team to Alton, Illinois. So, they had, uh, when they made the championship game, they championship uh, Thursday, they had uh, extra fans come in for that game so that hadn't been there earlier in the week. So, good stuff. All right. Well, hey, but, uh, again, Whitewater. Falls to Penn State in the championship game. Another good game, 6-3. to three. And the Nittany Lions take home their third national championship. And let's join, let's invite MVP of the World Series, Tyler Reinert, to the show. Hey, how's it going, guys? How you doing, Tyler? I can't complain. Doing well. Yep. What, what do we got behind us? Is that a trophy case? I can't see. Uh, this is internet was bad downstairs, so I had to run run back upstairs. This is the mom's collection of stuff, but I, we're uh, starting our own trophy case downstairs. So okay, there we go. We do have well, the championship hat appearance. Though. We do have the championship hat appearance. Absolutely. Good stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Tyler, at what point did the, this season did you and the Nittany Lions realize you have a team that a team that could 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 potentially go all the way? I would say uh, I was the fall league director for our team this year. I would say the very first day of tryouts, um, we had a, a really good run, a deep run last year. Uh, we saw the couple pieces that we were missing. We, sh- we saw our weaknesses, uh, and we saw who we were bringing back. And then that day one of seeing the talent that we had coming in from tryouts, you know, our president, Brett Steinel, did a really good job, you know, bringing everything together. Our coach, uh, legendary coach, Cam Medic, um, in the PSBC, you know, reign. Um, he did a great job bringing those guys on. And in day one of practice, this, the energy this group had is, is unmatched. You know, I've been on good teams. I've been on great teams. I've been on bad teams. Um, we had the talent, and we had the, uh, that chemistry. This, the vibe of this team was unmatched. Now, I got to see you guys play down in, in Panama City Beach, uh, you know, both your D1 and your T2 teams. You look like, a, you look like Patton's army running out there with so many guys, but yet so focused, so organized. It was like clockwork the way that, you know, 60 guys ran through uh, infield, outfield drills, batting practice drills. You know, it seemed like both your D1 and D2 teams were locked in together. Is that a chemistry uh, theory that the team put, that the organization puts together so that you can inject pieces from D2 to D1 year after year? Oh, absolutely. We are, uh, we say this all the time, we're one team. Um, we practice together. Uh, we, we work together. There's not much we don't do separate. Every once in a while, we'll slow up the cages. Um, but we all work. You know, we're, we're on a – it's a business It's a business trip. It's really not uh, – we're having fun. We're having a great time. But you know what's the most fun is winning. Uh, so that's what we do. That's what our, our medic has preached forever. Uh, and that, that resonates throughout, whether that's D1, D2. I could name you, I bet, every single name from D1 all the way down to D2. That's just how our team works. Now, that I think that's well said in uh... – can check out as just noticing you guys around the facility in Alton. Um, and like Sandy said, very focused, like an army almost. And the energy was always very high when I was in the dugout for a couple of you guys' games. seems like everyone's totally bought in at all times, um, keeping everybody accountable um, and always thinking you're in the game. Um, so would you say that's just kind of the uh, attitude that's been instilled at Penn State? Absolutely. That's exactly what our coaching staff has preached. That's exactly what we've been trying to execute. Um, I thought it was a beautiful, you know, symbolism enacted in the game. You know, uh, my reliever all year, I've been consistently been a starter in the reliever, Matt Fricker, who had a heck of a tournament um, in the Cal Poly game. I ended up working into a jam through way too many pitches way too early. Uh, bases loaded, I think one or I think two outs, actually. And he came in, picked me up. It's next man up. And guess what? He was the first person to say, way to get us this far, let me take the lead. And I had full confidence in to do that. And then kind of on the reverse flip, you know, in I think the Florida State game, it was the exact opposite that happened. I came in for him, bases loaded. So really great atmosphere, being able to pick each other up and have confidence in this team. The depth of this team is what made this team so different than last year. You know, last year we had a lot of falterings. We had a bunch of guys go down with injuries, and we just had limited guys to to back them up. This team, you said we have an army, and we were well-trained and ready to perform. Now, you bring up Fricker, and I'm glad you did because um, I forget what game it was. Um, I, it might have been your first one versus Virginia Tech, but all I heard from 
both teams, somebody in the stands, maybe an umpire after the game, was how good his um, splitter was. Is that something that he's had for a while or something that you guys kind of incorporated into his arsenal this year? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's something that he's been working on for a while, and it just continues to get nastier. Um, it's, I, I just can't explain it. I, we've been working on it all year. I've been trying to learn how to throw him, but I just didn't have that gift, I guess. Um, so, yeah, he's been an absolutely unreal reliever. He was a stud for the D2 guys last year. He was a reason they went uh, – part of the reason they went deep last year as well. They were runner-ups for our D2 uh, World Series last year. So he was an excellent tool, kind of what you talked about, the D2 flow into the D1. He was absolutely one of those guys that stepped up and performed from the pitching staff standpoint. Now, now Tyler, you've attributed, attributed some uh, a good bit of your success to the team attitude, the team focus, and putting that on the shoulders of Cam Medic, Medic and his – uh, coaching philosophies you know I think a lot of people in the league don't realize that he was a college student too you know he just graduated this past couple weeks ago and and now you know wants to pursue a, a career in coaching and is moving on in there so it seems I've heard from some guys saying like we've got a lot of players coming back but it seems like the big shoe biggest shoes to fill are actually in, in that head coaching booth what is the plan for the Nittany Lions uh, moving forward in that coaching department. Well, I don't. I, I'm assuming this is uh, no longer classified, but I believe I don't know if it's official yet. But uh, pitching coach Mitch Maletics, I guess if it's official now, I guess might as well say congratulations, Mitch. I don't know if that's official, but it's official. He's uh, he's going to be stepping up the head coach. He was uh, actually one of those guys that brought brought on the D2 team last year as a catcher, uh, and due to some injuries, he was unable to continue to keep playing. And they brought him on as a pitching coach this year. Was an excellent example an excellent help of keeping us healthy um, as a pitching staff, keeping the rotation going and doing what needed to be done. Uh, and he did a fantastic job, fantastic. Uh, you know, he spent a year behind Cam and he believes all the same things he does. Uh, I'm really upset to see our, our coaching staff go. Um, of course, I'm going to, but um, just for the organization, but Mitch will do an absolutely phenomenal job filling his shoes. All right. Well, we congratulations to Mitch, the new head coach, and we look forward to – I'm sure we'll get to meet him along the, the road of the 23-24 NCBA season. Uh, and, and uh, Tyler, it's been great getting to talk with you here. Congratulations on your national championship. Congratulations on your MVP uh, selection. I know, you know talking to the guys that, that, that make that selection, they were struggling. I mean, not that you didn't pitch well, but they were like, that, this whole team played well. Every pitcher did well. Every hitter did well. The defense was solid. It's like you could almost, uh, you know, pull any name out of a hat off that roster and, and justify giving them the MVP award. Ultimately, they fell upon you, uh, I think, with your, your big clutch, you know, ice in the veins performances in, in the reliever roles, plus your great start. Um, so congratulations on that. You mentioned you're a graduating senior. What's next uh, for Tyler Reiner? Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I'll be moving down right underneath Baltimore. I got a job at North Grumman, so I'll be working as mechanical engineer, designer on mission systems and missile systems down in uh, Baltimore. Excellent stuff. That's Congratulations, a fellow Penn State ME myself. Obviously not, uh, not working in that field anymore, but uh, I, I know what you've gone through. Congratulations. That's a great uh, uh, company to go to work for in a great area with the uh, Department of Defense. So good stuff there. Congratulations, and thanks so much for your time uh, joining us on Sweet 301 this month. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. All right, Tyler Reiner from Penn State. All right, Jimmy, can you uh, run us through that, uh, the, how the D1 Top 20 finished up? Division One National Champion Penn State um, takes the top with all 20 first-place votes followed by the seven other World Series teams, um, rounded out with Florida Gulf Coast, UC Davis, Notre Dame, among some other regional um, qualifiers there. So no big surprise from what I can see, a bunch of people falling um, that also fell short at regionals, and Alabama, UConn, and East Carolina all making the jump into the top 20 as well. well look at that. Whitewater goes from unranked to number two in the country. Impressive. Congratulations. I mean – you know, Penn State wins the national title, but I think, you know, a lot of people will agree the big talk was uh, the Whitewater. Warhawks. Warhawks, yes. And uh, excited to see how that does, what that performance does for their program in terms of recruiting more kids off campus, on campus to, to come play for their team next year. So good stuff. All right. Well, we talked about D2. We talked about D1. I guess we should go to D3 le next, and let's go uh, through that bracket. Jimmy, what do, you, what do we got on that? So as you can see, Milwaukee School of Engineering um, goes perfect on the weekend, claiming the national championship over Kent State 4-2. to two. 
Um, looks like Rhode Island came in third there with York PA going 0-2. Um, but, you know, no no small feat to make it to the World Series. Congratulations to all four teams there. Um, and it looks like we will have Roman Skorupa from Milwaukee School of Engineering. Welcome to the show, Roman. Oh, yeah. Uh, we can't hear you, Roman. <laughs> How about now? Is that better? There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Good stuff. Roman. All good. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor to be here representing uh, Milwaukee School of Engineering Club Baseball. So thanks again. Tell, tell us a little bit about you, uh, you know, your involvement with the team. How long have you been involved with the program? And have you, you know, did you go into this season expecting to, to, to get to that, to that final championship game? Um, yeah, so I started um, I, right away. I knew I wanted to be a part of uh, club baseball with MSOE. Um, so I started as a freshman. That was three years ago at this point. Um, as a team, you know, we uh, – it was during the COVID year when I started and we, you know, we really truly didn't have like a full identity of what uh, the program really wanted to become, but uh, we've gotten a lot of good talent coming up through the years and um, we've really built the program uh, and I'll give credit to uh, the president and vice presidents that we've had, Stephen Lederman, uh, Peter Blanchard, Gavin Wood, um, who have all helped us, uh, you know, get to the point where we, uh, where we are right now. And that's, uh, you know, something that we're, we're really proud of. Um, looking to go um, in uh, next year, um, we're, we are actually uh, now going all the way to, uh, we're going to have a D3 team and a D2 team. We're actually looking to uh, expand, um, you know, for a small school. Uh, we only have about 2,500, I believe. Um, you know, we're real proud of that, and uh, we're, we're ready to uh, get into deep water to see what that brings us. Now, do, do you have a var varsity program there at MSOE? Yes, yes, we do. Wow, so pretty much half your campus is going to be playing some form of baseball, I guess. Yep, and that's that's you know that's been something that uh, we've been talking with the with the varsity coaches about that they really want to grow uh, grow the sport of baseball. We've been able to use their field all year, fully turf, beautiful field, awesome facilities that we've been you know fortunate enough to use, and uh, and you know that that helps us as a team to uh, get better. Absolutely, yes. Especially, you know, when you talk about Milwaukee weather, I can't imagine your your Februarys and Marches are really suitable for playing baseball. But having a, a turf turf track to play on helps you get practices in. Hey, and I'll, I'll tell you what, winning a national title is going to certainly uh, uh, increase your recruitment levels in terms of who wants to come to the school and who wants to play baseball. And that's great stuff. Uh, no, now, uh, pardon, forgive me. I don't know much about you. Are you an officer on the team? Or are you a player? Um, I was a player coach last year, um, helped a little bit around with uh, the process of that. Um, this upcoming year, I'm going to be vice president under uh, Gavin Wood, who's going to be our president. Okay, good stuff. Now, uh, you, so you win the D3 National Championship, and we were really excited to be able to bring, in, in case you're not aware, we had Division Three before the pandemic hit. Uh, mm -hmm. The pandemic really you know, chopped our legs out from under us in terms of numbers of teams. And we were excited to be able to bring that level back. Uh, to get regain gain the numbers we had pre-pandemic, so it's great to have a Division Three World Series back, and congratulations on winning it. Now, what was the reception like when you came back to campus? You know, to toting that trophy along with that title and that banner, and being able to say, "Hey, we're the national champs." Um, it was pretty good. You know, we uh, it, it's a pretty small campus, so you know a lot of people know each other there. So uh, we we got a pretty good reception from all the friends and uh, everything. We were on trimester systems at that point, so a lot of us had finals the day after <laughs> our eight-hour drive from Pennsylvania. So uh, next year we're going into semesters. Hopefully, uh, hopefully if we uh, make it again, which we plan to, uh, we won't have to run into that issue. But. Uh, but yeah, no, it was it was awesome to be, be back on campus, uh, uh, and, and it was you know such a great group of guys to to um, you know actually bring down there and have back. So it was awesome. Now, Roman, what uh, what does the team look like next year? I know you said you're you're uh, hoping to have a D two and a D three team in the league next year, which obviously means you're going to have uh, expecting bigger numbers. But what does the team? Are you bringing a lot of people back? A um, lot graduating. Uh, what's what does uh, Milwaukee School of Engineering look like for twenty three twenty four? 
Yeah, I'm glad that you brought up uh, the the people graduating. You know, as I said before, when I was a freshman, we didn't you know really have um, that much of an identity. Uh, we were you know low in numbers, but uh, we really built that over time, and that is due to uh, the seniors. Um, Nick Romano has been a first baseman for us, very good all year, um, and and all through his career, a very fun guy. Um, Jimmy Mills has been a stellar pitcher for us. Peter Blanchard, um, our president, um, and uh, you know just that involvement is so crazy and it's so great to have um, and it's going to be unfortunate to lose them but uh, on the other side we have a lot of um, we have an inside track on a lot of guys who want to come to MSOE and play baseball so we're thinking that we can get um, a lot of talent coming up through there and um, this freshman class that we got has probably been one of the best that uh, we've received Um, and you know seeing the, the strides that players can make from freshman to sophomore year. Well, you know, they're still, bodies are still kind of developing, getting stronger. Um, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of good hitters who are freshmen who are going to get even better that we're real excited for. Now, Roman, uh, like you said, small school at MSOE um, and very impressive to win the division three national championship. When did that come to uh, fruition that you guys really thought that, uh, Hey, we have a shot this year to go and do this. You know, uh, for some of us, probably didn't really cross our minds, but uh, for uh, another handful of us, that was the end goal. That's what we wanted to do. Um, and the first goal was to get there. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, we didn't sweep a single series. Every series we played um, in our um, in our division, in our district, was uh, very close. We went two and one, one and two a couple of times. Um, it was actually great competition, and it's great to have. Um, and that's, you know, it's something that's... Uh, that we like as the NCBA that you provide for us is, you know, competitive baseball. So it's an awesome opportunity to be able to play with that. Um, and then once we got to uh, the, the district playoffs and once we, you know, had a shot at uh, going to the World Series, we knew we had to make the most of it. Um, timely hitting showed up. The great pitching stayed like it always did um, and came up our way. Awesome. Well, we're glad you guys enjoyed your season. We're happy that you guys are putting in a second team um so we're excited to see what uh what will come out of those two teams next year thank you thanks so much roman congratulations yep thanks for having me on guys appreciate it all right roman from msoe milwaukee school of engineering Uh, yeah all right so on the housekeeping items let's wrap up our baseball segment here uh housekeeping items what do we got jimmy what do we need the baseball teams to be focused on right now? Um, the biggest item is paperwork for next year. Um, you should have received several emails by now. Um, and if you haven't got it in, you're past the deadline. Sooner rather than later, your spot will be jeopardized. Um, so make sure you guys are working on getting that in. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Um, be on the lookout for all region and all American teams. They started getting posted this week. Um, we'll be releasing one region a day leading up to the release of the Division Two All Americans um, on top of Division One and Division Three as well. All right, good stuff. All right, Jimmy. Well, thank you very much. We'll le- take you off the hook. You can exit stage left as we are conclude our NCBA baseball segment. But that's not all we have to talk about because Christian, I believe, on your. Uh, email header it says vp of softball operations so let's let's talk about the the ncsa softball world series yeah uh, i got to go this year which i was really really excited about the previous year i was not able to uh go because of uh what do you internal uh issues but i was really excited to go down um obviously columbus georgia is a uh city that we're really familiar with this is our 13th this past uh, World Series was our 13th year down there. Um, obviously an awesome facility and uh, awesome hospitality down there. So I was really excited to get down there. And obviously we had a fantastic event. Um, let's bring up the – this is the winner's bracket of the uh, national championship tournament. And I was just recapping this uh, in my office um, before we came on. And especially, you know, later uh, in the uh, event, I mean, just some really, really good games, some tight games. Obviously, you know, the one that sticks out is the Virginia Tech uh, one nothing uh, win over Iowa, which I think was uh, bottom of the seventh. I don't think we got into uh, 
the extra innings on that one, um, but I remember their catcher hitting a, a walk-off single to, to win that game one nothing to send Virginia Tech to the championship game. And then, um, you know, Iowa taking on Clemson, you know, uh, I think winning three to two um, national championship game four to two. I mean, just a lot, a lot of tight games, a lot of competitive games. Um, just an exciting event, and uh, looking forward to talking with Katie Freed from uh, Virginia Tech. And, um, and I want to add to that bracket. You know, yes, the Virginia. I think the the game that changed it all was that Virginia Tech won uh, Iowa nothing game because if Iowa wins that game. You know, that Virginia Tech winning that forced Iowa to have to play an extra game that day before they had to come back and get a shot to beat them twice. But I remember Iowa, I think a round or two before that, Iowa beat Georgia, the number one seed going into bracket play, three to nothing. And people just kept coming by. They're like, you know, all right, all right, so, so we got to go through Georgia. We got to go through. I said, no, Georgia lost. Georgia just lost to Iowa. People couldn't believe it. Yeah. Iowa was an impressive team. They were a very impressive team. They were at, awesome. At first time in the World Series. Really hats off to those the Hawk the Hawkettes, the Hawkeyes, whatever they would be called, but impressive team. And and that Virginia Tech winning that one nothing game, I think that's what set them up for a national t- championship run again. And I believe it's two years in a row where Virginia Tech hadn't lost a game at the World Series. Yeah. 8-0, 3-0 in pool play, 5-0 and in the, the double elimination portion of it. And I believe in that game, um, we can talk with Katie more about it, but um, I believe in the top of the seventh, I forget what the situation was, but Virginia Tech got out of a big jam. Um, I want to say they had runners on second and third, no outs, and um, I, I can't remember. I'll have to ask Katie. She'll, she'll remember. But um, it was just an awesome game. Uh, it was an awesome event, and let's, without further ado, bring on our a first-team all-region shortstop in the Mid-Atlantic, Katie Freed. Katie, how are you? Hey, guys. Are you able to hear me? We can. Perfectly we can. clear. Sound great. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, oh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yes, yes. Congratulations, one, on obviously the national championship, the back-to-back national championship. But as I alluded to in your introduction, you are a, uh, were elected or selected, I should say, uh, first team all-region shortstop. Uh, so you'll be in the mix for, uh, for all Americans as well. But um, talk to us about the national championship, the World Series. Obviously, you have a bullseye on your back as the – you know, coming in as the defending national champions. What was your mindset heading into the 2023 NCSA World Series? We had a couple times talked about kind of like that uh, target on our back sort of uh, idea. We had said it multiple times where we were kind of like, you know, some teams might be out to get us. We, you know, we won last year. We're back again. Um, But we really just focused on playing our game. Uh, last year, it was kind of, you know, it was hard to, we had, last year, we uh, had definitely had a different offense than we had this year. We scored a lot of runs. And so coming in this year, we were like, you know what, don't think about that last year. We, you know, the odds was doing that again, it would be kind of crazy. We need to just play our game and have fun, uh, which we did. You know, some of those games, as you said, were very close, which I probably lost, like, 10 years on my life watching them (laughs) and playing in them but it was uh definitely a lot closer games which makes it it makes more fun yeah but i'm just glad we were able to pull it out (laughs) yeah and and you alluded to it i i i was looking at the run differential in the in the double elimination portion of the tournament not excluding pool play you had a plus 1.6 average run differential i think the biggest gap was a 6-3 win over uh over illinois uh, the other games were either two yeah. runs or less. Um, the one thing that r- I really stuck with me, and and I was bouncing kind of all over the the tournament, so I didn't get the, a chance to really watch an entire game. But the one thing that really stuck with me with the Hokies, it seemed like y- you guys were in, you ladies were in a lot of tight games on a big stage, but it almost seemed like you were, you knew you were going to win. It just seemed like you were. The dugout was calm. Um, cool, collected. How does that, is that a mindset that the team has all year? Um, you know, how do you guys 
remain calm, cool, collected in situations like that? Uh, usually it's a lot about, well, we, we try to keep as calm as we can, but we try to emphasize just having fun. We're a big thing that we always say is bookends, having fun. Like we, every talk that we have with our team before and after games always starts with have fun and they always end with have fun. Those are our bookends. Um, so, you know, we might be a little bit stressed in there, but it's definitely more of us just having fun because it's a great opportunity that not everybody gets to have. Um, so, you know, but it, those games definitely, they were stressful, but I'm glad we came off very calm. Yes. That's definitely good to hear. <laughs> Maybe you weren't, yeah, but that's that's the one thing I did. I just seemed like these are the defending champs. They know what they're doing. Yeah, they might be down, and I don't even know if you were down in any games, but, you know, you were in these tight games, and um, I want to talk about that, the, the Iowa uh, game um, where you won one nothing, And if you can, uh, the, the top of the seventh, if I remember correctly, you were in quite a bit of jam, were you not? I cannot remember if it was the seventh or the sixth, but I know what inning you're talking about. Uh, it was no outs, I believe, runners on second and third. And... Uh, my sister actually is also on the team and we she was playing first base at the time and I was playing short and there was a quick line drive back to her I come over to second we get the double play and then I believe we ended up getting a one more out somewhere yep. probably a pop fly or a ground ball of some sort but that was that was big and we had another double play earlier in the game similar situation uh runner on second. I think that was the second or third inning, which was also super big for us. So we had some clutch plays. Our defenses became, came in clutch at the whole tournament, for sure. Now, Katie, Sandy Sanderson here. I love, I love your backdrop. I, lo I got to ask you this question. But you got that oh, wall yeah. right next to you. Where's the, where's, the second, where's the second banner? I see 22 there. Where's Our second banner's hanging up. I'm my apartment currently is a little bit of packing up, so I'm not at my apartment, and that one is being hung up somewhere else. But we have a we have a location for it next year once I move in in July, and we'll have everything hung up, both trophies. We'll have a huge shrine for it. <laughs> All right. And how come it gets to be in your apartment? Well, we <laughs> – that's – yeah. Well, we'll have some in the, the school. We have a different banner in the school – and our regional trophies, and they'll get our big trophy for a little, but uh, we are trying to get together some sort of club softball house for us to hold our events and, you know, some, like, good stuff for our team bonding. And so we're having a house that a couple girls are living in that we're hoping to keep passing down to our freshmen or underclassmen as we graduate. The Holy Shrine of Virginia Tech Club Softball. The Holy Shrine. <laughs> there you go. A couple years from now, you'll have to pay admission to, to get a tour. Good stuff. Oh, oh sure. that's that's great, Katie. <laughs> well, um, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to steal your question because I know Christian's going to come up with it because he asks everybody this question. <laughs> Talk to us about Virginia Tech 2024. Is a three-peat possible? A three-peat is definitely possible. We did lose a bunch of seniors, uh, which we are very, very upset about, and they're, you know, all of them holding huge roles on our team. We, as of now, each year we keep getting our freshmen get stronger and stronger. Uh, you mentioned earlier before I came on, our catcher hit that, uh, had that hit in the Iowa game. She's a freshman. She caught she was awesome. like at least the last four games. Oh, she was fantastic. Um, a lot should, of our we should drop one of our other should, first. We should drop her name, Katie. Oh, yeah, Lainey Bradley, one of our there freshmen. Go. There uh, we go. So clutch, extremely clutch. Um so she, her, a uh, bunch of our starters, all freshmen each year, they just get stronger and stronger. So not sure who's coming in next year yet. My recruiting skills are a little subpar for the, <laughs> you know, going and picking girls out. But we do host events where we try and get girls to come check out our trophies and sign up. So we'll see who comes out. But I'm feeling confident, feeling good with our well, new girls coming in. Well, at your student involvement fair, when you have those two big trophies, 22 and 23, sitting on the, oh, book, yeah. on the bookends <laughs> of your table – with the whole I have have fun mentality in the middle, I think you're going to have trouble oh, you yeah. know, pushing people away from signing up. People are going to be Definitely lined might up. have to get a longer table. Might, oh, have to yeah. get, might have to start a Division two team. That too. Yeah. Katie. I've, you know. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, I, I remember I saw I was putting the program together for the World Series, and I, had, I had, there's this one page where it's a collage of all the regional teams. Uh, 
you know, champions with the trophy <laughs> and and I was looking at yours and I was like, is that a baby? What is that weird <laughs> baby doll is that yeah. a real baby or is, and then i saw it down at the world series tell us talk to us about the uh the the legend of the the baby doll the doll yeah we had so many teams asking us about that that's um technically my daughter philly steak her name, yeah philly, <laughs> philly steak, steak. Uh, that's her name philly steak <laughs> yeah okay uh we had a team event a few weeks prior to regionals and it was a, a redneck wedding we have one of our uh, old girls who played in the fall. She ended up graduating early, so she wasn't able to play with us. But she came with us. I believe she was on our roster, Cassidy Stokes. And she had gotten engaged a few weeks before. We were like, you know what? We have to throw her a wedding. <laughs> but we weren't going to just throw any regular wedding. We threw her a redneck wedding. So we all dressed up and, you know, in some flannels and boots and everything and had a big wedding. And I ended up buying her at the Goodwill to be my daughter for the wedding. Wow. So that's her. And she came along with us to regionals and then we won regionals. So everybody was like, she has to come to nationals. Yep. <laughs> so that's, that's the story of Philly steak. Philly, Philly steak. steak. I like it. Well, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, if it works, it works. Uh, Philly steak. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it seems like uh, she's a part of the team now, I guess. So um, congratulations on the back to back national championships. Um, you know, really impressed with your team. I, I think you you did Virginia Tech very proud, um, just representing the the university. So um, congratulations again, and uh, look forward to seeing what the Hokies do in uh, 23, 24. So enjoy your summer, Katie, and uh, hope to see you uh, back in Columbus in, in 24. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, yeah, hopefully we'll see you again, 2024. We'll see, but hopefully. <laughs> All right. All right, Katie, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Thank you. All right, Christian. Well, that was, that was a great interview with Katie, back-to-back -back champs. The Hokies. The Hokies. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, kind of, you know, full circle. Our first nas softball national championship was held in Blacksburg way back in, uh, in 2007. And um, Illinois, I believe, won it that year, but. Um, yeah, I mean, full circle. They're national champions now, back to back, um, and and yeah, just I, I, they're they're a good program, a program that you know is completely student run. They don't have any head coaches or anything like that. Katie Dodge, their president, was was awesome to work with, and um, you know, just they they had a great event. Obviously, went perfect, eight and zero there. So they know how to get it done. So congratulations, Hokies, and, uh, yeah, hope to see you in uh, 2024. So, right. Well, why don't you take us through our final top 20, how that's how that pan out for the end of the season? Yeah, um, not, uh, not a lot uh, of change. You see, you know, obviously it, it usually pans out where the top six – or the, yeah, top 16 teams are the 16 World Series teams. Virginia Tech, obviously, uh, unanimous number one. They started – as the number one um, finish as the number one team in the country. I think there was only two months where they, they weren't atop the pool. Sacred Heart Red took them uh, uh, from the top of the rankings for a couple months. But um, Cream rises to the top, and uh, they finish number one uh, in the pools. And Iowa, you know, the I think, you know, you have UW-Whitewater on the men's D1 side of things. I think Iowa was kind of the story at uh, the Softball World Series, a team that had never been there, but just a team that competed, um, you know, and, and also should be very, very proud of how they conducted themselves, how they played on the field. You know, Alyssa Martin, the, the MVP, um, the shortstop from the University of Iowa, um, you know, taking home MVP honors for her play, uh, which, you know, I don't know how many times that has happened where the national champion – um, or the MVP didn't come from the national championship team. So congratulations to Iowa and all the all 16 teams that came down. The one thing that I absolutely love about the Softball World Series is that teams just have a blast down there. It's busy. It's crazy. There's 55 games going on in four days and, you know, eight fields going on, and it's just, uh, you know, just people in and out, and it's it's like this controlled chaos that's, just a lot of fun and the teams are having fun and um you know it's they they just enjoy it they have smiles on their faces and uh even you know even if they 
don't win. I know Maine, you know, didn't have the greatest World Series down there, but they just had a blast being in Columbus, Georgia, and uh, being at that fantastic uh, venue. So I remember how excited they were when they did win. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they had uh, who'd they be? They had a. Uh, um, did they eliminate Penn State. I know they had a big game uh, that they they they. Uh, I forget who it was. Um, they didn't beat Clemson anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, just a, an awesome event. Looking forward. We're going to be back there for 24, 25, and 26. You know, we signed that extension with Columbus. So um, I took a lot of notes. We got a lot of great uh, feedback internally about how we can make the event bigger, better uh, next year. So um, really excited to get back to work, back to the grind for 23, 24. So. All, right. um, all regions. We have all regions coming out. You can see you can go to our website. They're, they're posted all over, over the website, social media. Um, seven of the eight have been released. I think the last one will be released into the South Atlantic, which will come out tomorrow. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, and congratulations to all those who made uh, all American, or excuse me, all region. Now all those uh, players that have made all region will be uh, thrown back into a big pot and uh you know we'll, we'll sit down and select the all americans from those selections so um congratulations to all those and all americans uh hope to have those out um probably early next week um but so stay tuned for that as far as housekeeping items we do have like the men's and women's basketball we have the league meeting set the invitations have been sent out to the teams i haven't put that online yet just because we have a lot of stuff going online like the all-region teams, I don't want it to get lost, um, but it should be in everybody's inbox uh, October. Um, June 27th, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Facebook Live is the annual league meeting. I cannot encourage you more um, to join us that night uh, for that meeting. Um, you know, we will have a recorded version, but the live version is interactive. You can ask questions during the event. We have a moderator sitting on a keyboard um, ready to answer any questions you may have about the presentation. We'll try and even ask the questions live during the meeting um, to get you an answer. And also we'll be talking about rules for this upcoming year. So if you have any rules that you have in your back pocket that you want to see changed or, um, you know, amended or deleted or whatever uh there will be an op uh, opportunity for you to bring those up so and, uh, and, and that's a real important this year with division two getting launched yes as, as you know the division two rules it might suit the division two teams to have a slightly different set of rules yes so those will be things we will be discussing that night so make sure you are able to uh to tune in you know save the date whatever you need to do put it in your phone um but june 27th 7 p.m and that invitation is in your inbox. Um, other things to look out for, we talked about the All-Americans. Those will be released after all the All-Region teams have been released, so those should be coming out in the next week or so. Uh, academic All-Americans will be out uh, shortly after the All-Americans. Um, and then finally, we have um, a sponsorship award. I always call it sponsorship award. Sportsmanship award. Um, that we've been doing. I think this is maybe year three or four that we've been doing it. Uh, Claudia Ray from uh, Michigan State, the the uh, current sportsmanship award winner. Um, but we will be sending out that uh, nomination form that you can nominate uh, one of your teammates um, and send that in, and we will uh, have a committee and, and select uh, – the sportsmanship award winner so be on the lookout for that as well all in all point being make sure to check your emails uh, i want to say we have 95 percent maybe even more of uh updated contact information for the teams um so if you are a new officer and, and are not getting uh information it probably means we don't have your updated contact information but um those are few and far between um yeah, lots of stuff going out. Make sure to check your inbox. All right. Well, thank you, Christian. Good update on softball. Well, that's going to wrap up our show for this month. We appreciate you tuning in to this episode of Sweet 301. 
And as always, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Yes, our next episode, oh, it's going to be a month from now, July 18th at 3.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. Join us to catch up on everything that's happening around Call Club Sports. Don't forget, it's a game. Have fun. <laughs>